Pagod na pagod ang Panginoon. He was physically tired. And that's the probably the reason kung bakit nakaupo ang Panginoon at kaya lugmuk siya. Yun yung dahilan. At the end of the whole day, talking, teaching, confronting, interacting, and uh, conflict, an exhausting day, a whole day in the midst of massive crowd, listening, interacting, that in itself, the physical effort in itself would have leave him exhausted. Pagod na ang Panginoon kasi buong maghapon na siyang nagtuturo. Right? And siguro kaya siya nakaupo at kaya siya nakatungo. And then, bigla siyang tumingala. He was physically exhausted. And then, in addition, besides teaching, remember what I said in Matthew chapter 23? Actually, you need to look at that uh, later sa, sa, sa study nyo. After all the years of his incarnation, all the years of his ministry, all the sermon preached, all the questions answered, all the miracles done, it all comes down to the leadership rejecting him and the nation following the leadership are also rejecting him. Ibig ko pong sabihin, at this point in time, the reason why the Lord Jesus Christ is so... Ano sa taga? Sa English ng lugmo? Uh, downcast. The reason why he was so downcast and he was looking down is because after 33 years of ministry, it came to a point that Friday he will be executed and at this point he is already putting judgment to the people because at this point it came to a point that hindi nila na gets. They, they still haven't get the real reason why the Lord Jesus Christ was doing his ministry for 33 years. Because why? Because they will receive judgment. Kung natuto sila, they would, there would be no judgment. At ito yung nakakapaglongkot lalo sa Panginoon. Kasi, you know, imagine, you have, sabi nga ni Sister Love, matapos mong alagaan ng pagkatagal-tagal, tapos biglang-bigla, babalik ka. O iiwanan ka. This is the same feeling what the Lord Jesus Christ might have felt. Uh, that's the reason why he was so downcast and he was looking down and he was sitting. He was so tired, you know, physically the whole day, and at the same time, he know in his mind, judgment will arrive. Do you think he would be happy? No. The Lord Jesus Christ would not be happy at all. Remember, on Matthew chapter 23, like what I said, Woe to you, scribes, verse 14. Woe to you, scribes, verse 15. Woe to you, scribes, 16, 17, 23, 24, 25. Woe to you. It's all judgment. And do you think he would be happy? No. He was condemning them. He was condemning the leaders. He was condemning the Pharisees. And that would exhaust the Lord Jesus Christ all the more. And that's the reason why no, no, bago niya, before he saw that poor widow, he was already so down because he was looking down. It all comes to that verse, right? It's all, it's over. It's judgment. And it's going to be that uh, way until, you know, uh, that the judgment it will end once the Lord Jesus Christ has come. Sabi ko nga, it's closing time. Oh, that was the one. Sabi ko kanina, di ba? Why do you honor the Father? But you nullify the word of God. But because of your tradition, you nullify it. So he looked up, and now it's, sabi niya, woe to you. And it's over. It's closing time. Sad reality, it's not, it's not just the physical weariness. It's the agonizing sad reality of what the Lord says. He feels deeply the sinful rebellion and belief of Israel leaders and people. He shed tears when he walked into the city. You can find that on chapter 19, verse 41, and saw it. He wept. He's still weeping. Preaching this word would be heart-wrenching. All for 33 years, and this is how it will end. An exhausting emotional experience for him, and it was over. So, 
uh, he looked up. He saw the opposite treasury observing how people were putting money in the treasury. So, nung tumingin ang Panginoon, he saw that the people are putting money in the treasury. Now, uh, on Matthew chapter 6, uh, ang sabi ng Panginoon, uh, be careful not to practice your religiousness in front of others. Right? But the religious system had devoted a very public, prominent way of doing things. Anong ginagawa ng mga religious leaders? Naglagay sila ng 13 chauffeur. Uh, I, I hope I pronounce it properly. Yung chauffeur, ito po yung hinuhulugan. Uh, yes. uh, hindi siya box eh. Para siyang trumpet na siya. Ang tawag nila daw chauffeur. Doon hinuhulog yung mga abuloy. 13. And all those shoppers, may mga labels sa baba. This is for love gift. This is blah, blah, blah. This is blah, blah. So doon daw nagbuhulog. Doon hinuhulog yung mga binibigay. And this is what the religious people have come up with. But look at what uh, what the Lord Jesus Christ on Matthew chapter 6. Sabi niya, be careful not to practice your righteousness. This is another one in forgiving. In front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward for your Father in heaven. So when you give, okay, give, uh, this is our topic, to the needy, do not announce it with the trumpet. As the hypocrites do in the synagogue, and on the street to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But look at it. But when you give to the needy, or when you give at all, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. This is another warning about giving. Two minutes na lang, tapos na po ako. So, the warning is, kailangan we, we should not be like the religious leaders. They are abusing the poor widow and at the same time, they're doing it in public. You know, the center of false religion, it's all about money. Pag na, pagka, punta po tayo, the first thing that you will notice about false religion, it's all about money. And, and look, at, uh, look at the verse that we have said. He said, he looked up and he saw a poor widow. Right? You know, unang nakita ng Panginoon. But look at that. On, 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 verse, on verse 46. I mean, on chapter 46, on verse 20. Uh, meron ba? Ito, look. Chapter 20, verse 46. Sabi ng ganun ng Panginoon. Okay, before it happens, before he saw the poor widow. Sabi niya, before the scribes would like to walk around in long robes, and love respect was written in the marketplace, in the cheap seat, in the synagogue, and a place of honors and banquet. Who, what happened? Who divorced widows' houses? Who divorced widows? Who divorced? Yeah. Something around. So, what is happening? The Lord Jesus Christ, before describing the judgment, he was talking about widows. And then all of a sudden, he saw a widow. Nagkataon na kaya yun? Is it a coincidence? I don't think so. Is this a topic about giving? I don't think so. Is this a topic about the, the system abusing the widow because of their giving? Probably. Right? Because before it happens, the Lord just said, look at these hypocrites. They are abusing the widows because of their giving. They, they, they try to be called church. You know, there is a survey for your day. Doon daw sa room, yung mga construction ng mga grave, mga, ang tawag nila doon, mga cathedrals, the construction never stops. And one person asked, bakit daw yung, yung, yung cathedral, the construction never stops? Sometimes it lasts about thousands of years. You know the reason? Because after some interview, they found out that the reason why it never stopped because if the construction stopped, the giving of the people and the taxing of the people will also stop. Look how foolish he is, right? Let me close on this. <laughs> Let me go now to my conclusion. Okay, conclusion ako. You know, the, the topic that we have read, they, they are being used by a lot of prosperity gospel people. Sabi nila, oh, look at what the widows did. 
do the same thing. Give me all, give us all your money. Give us all your money. But if we're going to understand that portion of the scripture, ah, ganun pala yun, brother, that it's nothing to do with giving. It has something to do with just like this hypocrites are doing to those poor widow. The Lord doesn't comment her. If you read the, if you read the text, wala kayong makikita na kinoment siya ng Panginoon. It doesn't make her an example at all. Hindi niya sinabi, hindi sinabi ng Panginoon, oh, follow her. No. It doesn't validate what she did. It doesn't say it was worthy spiritual. It is positive. Okay? Don't get me wrong. Mag okay naman yung ginawa niya. Pero I don't think God would say do the same thing. Because that's not what the Lord had in mind already. Uh, and in, 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 in the last verse, that we, it says there, it was her, sabi nga it says she had to live on. So imagine, yun na lang pala yung kinabubuhay niya, yung two silver coins. So meaning to say, nung binigay niya yun, what do we expect? Mamamatay na siya. She will die. Because that's how it is in scripture, that is, uh, she had to live on. Wala na. And then after that, she will die. You know, the scripture is full of commands and instruction to people how to take care of the poor and the widows alike. There are warnings all throughout the scripture and for us to care, especially us, the church, the Christian, the real, the real church. I hope we get the whole picture. Jesus isn't commending her. She is a victim. He's not proud of her. He's not making her an example of sacrificial giving. He is observing the corruption of the system that is going to be destroyed under the leadership of these corrupt, condemned leaders. They are exploiting the most defenseless, defenseless and the most impoverished. Jesus certainly is not saying she gave her last cent, and that's what we should do. Of course not. He doesn't say that. He doesn't want us to give everything, and then after that we die. He gives us ritually all the things we could enjoy. This verse doesn't say anything about percentage, has nothing to say about proportional giving, nothing about giving at all. Uh, nothing about the measure of the gift, what you have left, or what you have given. That's not there. She just given her last two coins to a false religion. And I think Jesus is angry. And that's why he is going to destroy this den of robbers. And it did happen on 70 AD. You know, James once said on verse 1 27 this is pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our god what it is to visit the orphans and the widows in their distress true religion does not abuse the poor it ministered generously graciously to their needs so what can i say so we go through minutes now okay here is what I can say before I pray. This is what I say. Woe to those who sell their miracles and their miracle cloth that promise to heal the desperate if they send their money. Woe to those who are wealthy, self-indulgent preachers who became rich on the back of the lonely poor, disillusioned, deceased, and desperate who are told to give their money as an act of faith so that God is obligated to make them healthy and wealthy. Woe to those who indulge in 10,000 night hotels room, claim revelation from God, spend thousands of money a month on their private jets with money taken from the offerings. Woe to them. You people will not escape judgment. And hopefully, this serve as a warning in giving to all of us. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we have heard your message and we know, Lord God, that this is consistent to what you would like to accomplish in our life. 
Lord, we understand that you came so that you will help us who are in distress. You came to provide us richly and to provide us with decent life. Lord, we pray that you stop these things that is happening around the world. That religious system is trying to abuse poor people out of their giving. Lord, thank you that we could see the different angles in the lesson about giving. Truly, Lord God, that, that you teach us to give. You teach us to graciously and eagerly to give. But at the same time, you empower us with wisdom, understanding, Lord God, what you would like us to accomplish. We entrust everything to you. In Jesus' name. Thank you.